Well, hello there, and welcome to another Divi tutorial. Divi is the WordPress builder that we used to build your website. And today we're looking at how to add a page that shows a special search with Showcase IDX. So if you're using this for real estate purposes and you have the Showcase IDX plugin, then you are in luck because we're going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is notice that here on the dashboard of your WordPress admin section, Showcase IDX has a box here. If it doesn't show up, you might have it collapsed, uh, but you'll still see the title there. You can show it there. Uh, if you don't see any of those, you may not have the Showcase IDX plugin installed. So probably better look into that. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our IDX dashboard. This is where we're going to be creating the search that's going to show up on our page. So I'm going to right click or option click on this IDX dashboard and I'm going to open this in a new tab. If you're using a different web browser it might say something slightly different but new tabs are helpful. Now I'm going to go to that tab and you can see I'm logged in to Showcase IDX up here and I'm going to click on the website that I want to work with. In this case it's McWilliams Buckley. Now we have several different headings up here in the navigation area. And the first thing we want to do is go to our search library. So I'm going to click on search library at the top. This is the library of pre-saved searches that we've created that are going to show us the properties we want to see. So if I want to create a new one, I can click create new search. Uh, in this case, I already have a search that I created. It's down here. This is for Fiddlesticks Country Club. So I'm going to go to the menu section over on the right just to show you what this looks like. If you click on these little menus, some people call them hamburger menus, you can go down to edit and that will show you the search form. Now this is very similar to what people can see on your site. Uh, that's another topic for another day. But in this case, I actually used the advanced search form. Now it defaults to streamlined, which is going to give you just a few options, but we did advanced. And the reason for that is because I wanted to look for some other options. And I won't get into those right now, but uh, what I'll, sh uh, I'll show you what I did. I typed in the search filter in the location. I typed Fiddlesticks. And you can see that it showed up Fiddlesticks Country Club as a subdivision. Now, this is grayed out because I already selected it. But if it wasn't grayed out, in fact, I'll just unselect it. Now, it's blue. And I click it, and that will actually show us here are the different things located. Now, if I want the customer or the visitor to my site to see the map a little closer when they first show up, I can do that here. However the map looks on this page is roughly how the map will look for the customer when they show up on this search page that we're creating. So I'm zooming in just a little bit and that's good. Uh, also in this particular case, if you scroll down the page, you'll notice <clears throat> that there is a, uh, a section here for filtering and I'm going to click filter by office. This is the office in this case for McWilliams Buckley. Uh, then I'm going to click update search and then below that it shows green and it says saved. If you ever get an error here it probably means you've been logged in too long and you have to go re-log into the system. Okay so I've saved that search in the search library. I'm going to click on the search library again you can see I have other searches that were created but this is the one for Fiddlesticks Country Club. Now the next thing I need to do is create a hot sheet because the hot sheet is what we're going to put on the page that we create that will actually show up for the user. So we start with a search and then we go to a hot sheet. Now there's a couple of ways. We could click this button and click the green button that says new hot sheet. But I already made a hot sheet for this so I'm just going to go and pick that. So I click on hot sheets here in the top gray navigation and you can see I've made several hot sheets and I named them. I put hot sheet in the name. That way it was easy to know what was going on. So you can see here is Fiddlesticks hot sheet. And once again, we have a little hamburger menu on the right where we can click and we can edit. We'll edit that. And this is where you set up how you want it to look. Now in this particular case, um, I created this hot sheet so that we could use it on the front page of the website. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like right here. This is displaying information that is pulled from that search that we created. And it's formatted in like a little carousel. You can see that here. I'm going to go back to the other page. And you'll notice this is set to be a gallery. It's set to automatically scroll results. It's set to show only eight results because, well, 
I don't want to show 20 things rotating on the home page. But it has an option where you can link to see all the results that were pulled up given the search that we created. If you want to change the name on the button or the, the title on the button, instead of saying see all results, it could be see results now or something like that. Uh, you could do that here. And in this case, we don't want to include a map because we're only showing this on the home page as a featured properties box. Now, I want to keep this hot sheet because I like having it on the home page in this format. But what I also want to do is create another hot sheet using the same search results, but I want to display it in a grid on a different page. So to do that, uh, I could go back here to hot sheets and create a new hot sheet. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to give it a name. What am I going to call this? Well, I'll just call it Fiddlesticks Country Club Grid Hot Sheet. This name is only going to be shown to me. The customer won't see that when they log into the website. So I give it a name. Uh, I gave it a name. And now we need to say, where will we get the information to populate this grid, to fill in the gaps, to put information in this grid that we're making? Well, we get the information from one of the search that we previously created. So when I click in this box, <clears throat> you'll notice that it shows the searches that I've already created. Or it gives me the option to create a new search. Well, I already made a search, so I'm going to click on Fiddlesticks Country Club. I've selected Grid. I want it to show 20 results on the page. It could be as many as 60. I think that's a lot for someone to load in their web browser. So we're going to leave it at 20 because, again, this is Grid, which makes it easier to show a large amount of information. I don't need to customize the button. I do want to show the map, though, because this is going to be on an actual page that the user goes to. It's not on the home page. So I want to show the map, and now that I've dis, uh, selected my options, I'm going to click Create Hot Sheet. Notice it shows up at the top, and it's distinct from this hot sheet down here. <coughs> I'm going to leave that as is because I already have it embedded, uh, but I could change the name of that if I wanted to, and uh, it would distinguish itself from the other one that we just created. Okay, <coughs> so we've made a search. That's where we got the information that we want to display. We made a hot sheet. That's where we decided how we want to display that information. So we have the what under search. We have the how under hot sheets. Now we need to decide where we're going to display it. To do that, I'm going to click the copy button here. And that's going to copy this short code. <clears throat> Anytime you see a square bracket and some stuff there and then another square bracket in WordPress, that's called a, uh, <clears throat> that's called a short code. So I've copied it. Now, for the most part, we're done with this admin section of Showcase IDX. I'm going to go in my other tab here in my browser, back to the dashboard for WordPress. Notice they're different. Showcase IDX is where you generate your searches to say what you want to show, generate your hot sheets to determine how you want to show it. <clears throat> but back in your WordPress admin section is where you decide where you're going to show it. So I'm going to put this on a page. And to do that, I go to my left-hand navigation and click on Pages. And I'm actually just going to select Add New because I know I want to add a new page. Now I'm going to call this page Fiddlesticks Country Club. <clears throat> uh, you know what? I Actually, yeah, we'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, we could change this to something. You know, I'm going to change it to this. Fiddlesticks Homes for Sale. That sounds a little better in search engines. If someone's searching for Fiddlesticks Homes for Sale, that'll show up. Now I'm going to click down in here, and WordPress automatically creates the URL or the address for this page. And before anything else, I want to click Save Draft. I'm going to save that so that I don't lose any progress. Now I've made the page and I've named it. <clears throat> WordPress created the link. Now I'm going to click Use the Divi Builder. This is how your site is built using the Divi Builder. You'll see these little swirling or color changing dots to indicate something's going on. And now we have an option, Build from Scratch choose a pre-made layout, or what we want to do is clone an existing page. Because I've already made pages that show search results, and I like the way they look. So we're going to just copy it. <clears throat> now these are examples of pages that are on the site. Uh, these pages all have what are called featured images. Um, that's just something that WordPress does. Uh, I have other ones. That I didn't add any featured images to these yet. We can in the future. But for now, all I'm going to do is click on Water Views because that's just a page I created 
that is displaying the results of a search for properties on the water. Now, we've created it, <clears throat> and you'll notice, uh, you may have seen one of the other videos, this is the wireframe or the backend view of this page in the Divi Builder. So I wanna build on the front end so that I can see things a little more easily. So I'm gonna click that button and it'll open up front end. Personally, I like the back end just because it's faster, but some people are more comfortable with the front end. Now we showed before how if you're in the front end and it still shows the wireframe view, you can click on the purple dots on the bottom to open up some options. And on the left side, you can pick a different view. So we're in the wireframe view, highlighted in green. You wanna click on the desktop view, which is gonna show us what it looks like on a typical desktop computer. <clears throat> now, first thing I'm gonna do is change my headline here. And I can either do that by clicking directly here, and I'll just do that um, for ease of use. Fiddle sticks homes for sale. All right, now I'm gonna hit the escape key, and that takes me out of that edit mode. Now I can move my mouse around, and I can click on other things. Uh, and in this case, I want to change the background of this section. Now in Divi, you have three levels of organization. You have a section, which is your biggest box. Think of it like little Russian nesting dolls that all fit within each other. Here's your big blue section. Some of them are different colors, but most of them are blue. Then you have your row, uh, which is in green. Let me see if I can get that to pop up here. Mm, clicking. It's being a little fussy because, oh, there we go. There's our green row, which lives inside the section. <clears throat> and then in the row, you have different modules. Here's a image module, and it has a little gear there. And here's a text module. Now, it's not showing me the gear and other items because I clicked to edit directly in the module. That's why I don't like doing that, but uh, that's an option. Okay, we're going to go back up here to the uh, this um, uh, section, and we're going to click the gear icon. Um, one thing you should know, sometimes these buttons are a little finicky. And quite honestly, that's one of the reasons why I like to use the wireframe view. So this is giving me problems and I don't have time to mess with it. So I'm going to go back to the wireframe view. And you can do the same if you have problems. And this is my very top section. I'm going to click it. And now I have section settings and I'm going to edit the background. Clicking on the background, I'm going to click just in the middle here. I could also click uh, the gear icon if I wanted to. It does the same thing. And I'm going to pick a different background. Uh, you may have a special background you want to use, or you can do like I'm doing and just pick something that looks nice. Uh, I know I haven't used this one before in one of these headers, I think. Uh, I just said I know and I think. So anyway, uh, we're going to click Upload an Image. <clears throat> You'll notice it changes here. All right. I'm going to uh, save my draft because I don't want to lose any changes I made. An old quote says, save early, save often, and that's good. Okay, now I'm going to go back to this desktop view on the bottom left, and we can see what it looks like. And there you go, Fiddlesticks Homes for Sale. So now, uh, I just have a little headline here, find your home today. And you'll notice now, here's a bunch of stuff, and it looks kind of overwhelming to edit, but all we're going to do is a very simple cut and paste. Here in the gray box, or this little gray box, is the module settings. What we have is I'm going to click that. This piece of code right here is creating all the information you saw below there. Now back in the Showcase IDX section, we already copied this short code. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to this page that I've created. I'm going to get rid of the old sh uh, short code and I'm going to paste the new short code. And then I'm going to click the green checkbox. Notice what happens. The search that we created and the hot sheet that we created is now showing up. Here's the map. Here are the properties here in Fiddlesticks Country Club, all being automatically generated by the Showcase IDX plugin. Now that I have this created, I am ready to publish. <clears throat> so I'm going to click the Publish button, and we are good to go. That will now be available. Now I'm going to do one more thing because I want to link to this page from the home page, and I want to show you how to do that. So I'm going to exit the Visual Builder, and I'm going to go back to the previous section. Uh, in this case, I'm still looking at this. Um, I'm going to go back to my pages, 
And so the easiest way to do that is just to click on the little t site title. In this case, it's McWilliams Buckley. Then click on pages. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna look for the page I just created. There it is, Fiddlesticks Homes for Sale. Um, one quick note, if you click the edit button, it will take you to the page where you can edit this whole page. There's also a quick edit button that lets you change just a few options if you needed to do that. In this case, I'm gonna make the parent page of this page the buy page. And that's really just an organization thing that won't necessarily show up on the front end for the customer, but I have it set up this way so it's more organized in the back, uh, in the background. So you can see here under the buy section, you have this little dash and you have things that are categorized under buy. Uh, now that didn't show up immediately. Uh, I'm gonna change this one also, put it under buy, save that. But if I go back to pages and click on all pages, now those things appear under the buy link. Here's buy, and then you have all the subsections, everything in between, fiddlesticks, homes, and that's all I need. All right, now the only other thing I need to do is I need to get the link of what this, how do I get to this page? So I'm gonna actually do the quick edit, and I see this is the slug, fiddlesticks, homes for sale, and so I'm gonna just uh, copy that. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I changed my mind, I can do that. Uh, I'm gonna click cancel and we're gonna go edit the page itself. And at the top of the page, you'll see this is the permalink. Uh, this is the actual link. If you wanted to tell someone how to get to this page, you would just give them this entire link. Now in this case, this is the temporary domain. So in the future, uh, you'll be able to see this. Um, it'll you know have a different web address probably. But when I put my mouse on it, it lights up because it's a link. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select copy link. This way, I can paste this link in another place so that you can go to it at will. I've copied the link for the page that I want. I mean, now I'm gonna go back to the section that shows me all of our pages, and I'm scrolling down to the home page. Now, you notice the home page is listed as the front page. You could pick another page to show up on the front of your site, but home is usually the best. So I'm gonna click edit, and when that happens, that's gonna pull up, once again, this builder on the back end. Now, uh, we're gonna click on build on the front end, like we did before, and <clears throat> that's gonna take us to the graphical area, but it'll probably still show wireframe. It occurs to me I should probably set the default to go to the um, desktop view. In fact, I wonder if I could do that here. Page settings, design, Okay, that's something for another day. For now, we're just gonna click it and it'll go to our desktop view. <clears throat> now I'm gonna scroll down and I have copied the link to the page we created. Now I'm gonna tell the web page that this item here should be linked to the page I just created. To do that, I'm gonna click on the gear icon that shows up on the gray module right here. And when I click it, we have several different things we can do. Here's the text section. I could change what appears on that section there. I'm sorry, on that module. But underneath there, we have link. Almost every module in the Divi Builder has an item called link, where you can link to stuff, which is amazing. Now, in this case, <clears throat> all I'm going to do is select the URL, and I'm going to get rid of it, and then I'm going to paste the URL of the page that I just created. Now, I can leave the entire address here, including the HTTPS and then the domain name, but usually it's helpful to get rid of the domain name itself and just leave what's called a relative link, which is the little slash and then where that link is. Now this is super duper important. You have to be really careful when you're doing this. If you take out that slash by accident, this link won't work. You have to pay really close attention, do it slowly and carefully, and only take out the HTTPS colon slash slash whatever your domain dot com or dot net or dot org or whatever. Take that out so that your URL is slash buy fail sticks homes for sale, and then click your green checkbox to save it. And one more time, I can't emphasize enough, you have to be very careful when you're making changes. Look at every little character, every little dash and slash 
which by the way, dash and slash are different, of course. Don't get those confused. Everything matters, so pay close attention. You've saved that module, and now you need to save the page. And once we do that, our journey is done. This shows you a little checkbox to indicate that it's saved correctly. I'm gonna go back over to my web browser. And as it is now, if I try to click this, nothing's gonna happen because this is an old link. But when I refresh the page, what we'll have is we have all this here, looks the same, but when I click Fiddlesticks Country Club, it's gonna take me to the page we just created, which has our headline, has our image, and most importantly, has the map and the results that we asked for in the past. You can click on any of these and it'll take you to one of these great subsections that shows you all about the wonderful property for sale. And that is how you create a search that decides what you want to show. That's how you create a hot sheet that decides how you want to show it. And that's how you create a page that decides where you want to show it on your site. Thanks for listening and watching. Hope that's helpful. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.